the I Make a Difference podcast, an adventure of exploration of your human self, the conditioned and unhealed parts of you, and your true self, the natural, real and powerful you, a pathway where you unravel, heal and uncover on your journey back to you. Meditation is a valuable tool and process to work with and one that was not just important for me but actually critical to me experiencing some level of sane stability within me during the day. My mother first taught me meditation when I was 21. I was desperate as I was emotionally unwell, physically unwell and I was spiralling into a dark space within me. My savings grace was not just my mother, but it was the meditation that she shared with me. For a period of my life, meditation was the only thing that gave me hope that things would be different. That the inner insanity of emotions and turmoil that I was experiencing, not just day to day, but it was almost minute to minute of each day, that it would cease, that it would subside and that I'd be able to actually get beyond it. Meditation was the hope of finding the space of quiet and just being and amongst my daily inner turmoil, even if it was only for five minutes and sometimes longer, until I realized that I was accessing meditation at the times when I needed to calm my emotional state. But was I really doing that? Was I really finding calm, true calm? The reality was that I was actually suppressing my emotions and this was limiting and hindering my healing and my growth. Healing and growth of me that I was absolutely committed to. The dilemma I faced was that meditation had been my anchor of hope for a year or two hoped that I was changing and that things would be better than what they had been and were. So rather than finding hope from things that were shared with me, for me to cling to, as that is what it felt like some days, that I was dependent on meditation to get me through a day, I wanted to find hope from within me. Where the flicker of hope that was part of my hurt and conditioned self could grow to become a flame of belief, a flame of trust and movement, where I went from hope to possibility to probability to actuality. So I gave meditation up and instead I committed to clearing the path within me that I had blocked and connecting to the space within me that the meditation helped me connect to. I wanted to be able to do it myself without using any other process except for me consciously working with all aspects of me. I essentially became self-reliant, self-driven, self-inspired to be more of my true self where I knew I could achieve a meditative state that meditation had previously provided me and this meditative state was within me that was natural to me. 30 years ago, yes, I'm giving away some of my age there, it's a little bit more than 30 years ago, I gave up meditation. So can you imagine the big smile I had on my face when recently during an online conference I was involved in, I won the prize to receive a personalized meditation from an amazing woman called Wendy Darling. As I smiled internally, my processing that was going on inside of me was, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting that meditation has come full circle back to me. And not just any meditation, a personalized one. The questions and curiosity I had was, hmm, why am I meant to experience this process again? Why am I meant to reconnect to meditation? And even more curiously, I was wondering, wow, what's going to unfold? And even as I'm recording this, I realize now, and what's come to mind is, the last meditation I was given 
this is the one after the one my mother had shared with me, was also a personalized one. It had a personalized mantra to it. The personalized meditation process had come full circle too. A meditation that had supported me to connect to the essence of me. Wendy contacted me to organize a time to connect to fulfill her gift to me. Well, for someone who's a stickler 99% of the time, because there are times when I slip up, but I'm a stickler at fulfilling my commitments and responsibilities. So what unfolded after Wendy had contacted me was really interesting and fascinating. I missed an appointment with her. I forgot to reply to rescheduling our time. And there were a couple of other instances where I stuffed up our connection. I said to Wendy in an email, I would no longer take up her offer as I was the one that was mucking her around and inconveniencing her. Her response, it was beautiful. She said, it's up to you, but the offer is still there. I loved her response and valued and appreciated it enormously and went, right, I'm doing this. And wow, what an interesting process. A process that for me revealed an echo from my past that I was not aware of was still impacting me. An echo with a focus on hope. It had total relevance to my current situation. Hope is a process that I believe was no longer a part of my life. And yet, through the time with Wendy, I got to see that it still is. And that is what this podcast is all about. Hope. I'm Melinda Cates and welcome to the I Make a Difference podcast. During my time with Wendy Darling, and don't you just love her name? Interesting also, I've just made another connection. My mum's name is Wendy as well. Wendy asked me questions to support her to create my personalised meditation. Questions that highlighted another process for me that's come out of this, that was connected to my hope. She asked me questions about the future. Questions which every time she asked one and I went to respond, I felt twinges actually physiologically within me. Twinges of, "Mm, I don't know if I want to go there, which I was fully aware of in my processing. And I knew I definitely had an echo resounding within me that required my attention and I was not escaping it. What I got to see with my processing with Wendy as she asked me questions about the future is that I found myself tending to answer in terms of now and also what I was experiencing or I tended to focus on the past. And Wendy was very clear and very gracious and gentle in bringing me back on track to focus on the future. I see now how I was even consciously fighting and have been throughout my life, the process of the future. I heard and felt the echoes of my fight with the future throughout my life. These were old habits, old conditioned ways of how I have approached my life. And some of them were still there. Ways that my soul, my true self was calling me to let go of and release. I had travelled the journey to connect with Wendy in this conference so that my soul could support me with the help of Wendy to be able to release these echoes so that they no longer impacted and influenced me. And reflecting on my discomfort and indecision as to my answers about the future and what I wanted, I did a rapid check in on my life journey to see where in my life Had I been comfortable and confident talking about the future? And what I discovered was interesting. A significant part of my life has been spent unravelling and healing the impacts of my past. So looking backwards and having a focus on the past is really familiar to me. And I now realise there's also a level of ingrained way of operating. So I'm conditioned to look back at the past. I've conditioned myself around that, as well as I have focused on growing my ability to live and focus on the present and what's happening now. Because ultimately, when we are our true self, 
And in truth, everything that matters is what's happening right here and now. And this is the place where we can influence things. You've got to love that I won a prize where my knowing, the voice of my true self, was rejoicing in as I could hear it and feel it saying, it's time, and the smile that I felt and saw within myself. My conscious human self, the part that is integrated with my true self, knew I was meant to receive this gift. Otherwise, I would not have got it. The gifts that are coming out of the process with Wendy are what I just nod my head about and say to myself, love this process. How cool is this? I'm so wrapped. I've had these things surface. I was seeing the process that have gone through in my life in relation to hope and where my focus has been during most of my life that led me to the discovery I made during this time with Wendy. And that's without even receiving her meditation. She spent some time talking to me and asked me a number of questions. And I, through my conscious awareness of my processing, was fully aware of what was unfolding and the intention and purpose for being connected with Wendy. My younger years of conditioning and pain were filled with me spending a lot of time living in my head in a future I wished and dreamed for, one that was different to the one I was experiencing. I'm sure this is an experience many of you have gone through. And being raised with fairy tales, I would often picture myself in those fairy tales. I dreamed of where I wanted to live, what I would be doing, who I would be with, what I would have. This is what I hoped for, for my future. My dreams and hopes were a want to escape where I was at. My want and need was for things to be different. I now can see, hear and feel that I was hanging on to hope and something coming to me or happening for me because deep down I didn't believe I could make it different for myself because there was a part of me that believed I didn't deserve to. As I dived into my healing journey over my life, I came to see my hopes were expectations, expectations of what could or should happen for me in the future, and they were driven by my neediness, my need to have things happen so that I would feel emotionally different to what I was feeling, my need to be of value, to be loved, to be accepted, and most importantly, my need to feel safe and secure. As I worked through the emotional venom that was running through my veins, healing and releasing it during my life, each day often felt like survival. And then it became like I was just existing. It took so much strength and belief in me that I could heal, that I would heal, and hope that I would wake up one day and not feel the pain anymore, or at least feel less of it that I would get through the torment of my destructive, negative, pessimistic and self-depreciating self-talk. As I saw others progress in their careers, their personal life and relationships, I felt more and more worthless and unworthy. Yet I still had hope, hope that one day the sun would shine more brightly, not just in my world, but most importantly in my internal world, and that things would be different. I was comparing and assessing people based on what they had rather than who they were and how they felt. I was comparing myself to them. They had elements of what I had hoped for. And boy, I did not feel good enough or that I measured up at all. I often would isolate myself from all of it because then I did not have to face what I did not have, that which I dreamed and hoped for. I continued to do everything I could to change things, both internally and how I felt and who I was and working towards discovering who I truly was. And also I did everything I could to change things in my life. But over time, as my hopes did not materialize, 
I now see, which has come about through the time with Wendy, I began to suppress those dreams because I began to lose hope that they were ever going to happen, let alone possible. My total focus became about the past and healing and unraveling it and focusing on where I was at now. I knew now, as I said before, was the only place that I could influence anything and that if I focused on here and now, then maybe the decisions I made would possibly, yet again hope, lead to that hope becoming possible, probable and actual. That hope I had suppressed way back in my subconscious mind. Yet through the times of suppressing my hope, my ability to control that suppression was often overridden by the urge for those hopes to have a voice. And this happened often when I was out of my isolation and plummeted into exposure to others whose lives were different from mine. Lives that I saw as better than mine. Lives that I wanted to have a taste of. It was at these times, this hope, those old dreams and wishes would flood my mind and I would find myself with my fingers crossed behind my back, hoping and praying something would change and that it was still possible for me that the hope would be a possibility and turn into a probability. I realise now my hope was blinding me to what was changing. I was fighting my hope. I was fighting my expectations and my neediness. I grew a belief that hope was not a process that belonged in the world of connecting to your true self. Go figure that. Your true self does not need hope. Your true self trusts and knows everything is as it's meant to be. Your true self knows where you're going, where you've been. And your true self knows that everything is okay and will be okay. Your true self chose the journey you experience in human form for your growth and involvement. So why would I want or need hope? So the more I've connected to my true self, the less my hope has had in each space. The more I healed, the less I focused on the past. The more I healed, the more my focus became on what is happening now and what I know I'm meant to be doing right now. Yes, there is an intention for what I'm doing, but it is the now that is important. If you live in the now, then you're open to all possibilities. But are they possibilities of what I can create? Are they possibilities of what can come to me that I can receive? I have worked consciously and intentionally on opening myself up to receiving the wonderful and amazing things that come to me. I have worked consciously and intentionally on knowing I deserve to receive what comes to me that is honouring of me. Believe me, I have struggled and it took so much work to get there because of the total desperate lack of self-worth that I had, the fierce independence I had, where I couldn't ask for help. I wouldn't receive anybody's help. I wouldn't even receive someone making me a cup of tea. However, now I see that, yes, I receive what comes to me, but I have not opened myself up fully to the possibilities, the probabilities and actualities that I can create, that I can contribute to, to making what I had hoped become a reality and an actuality. As time has passed, many things have changed and things have become so much more beautiful and wonderful and abundant. Yet a number of the things I hoped and dreamed for a long time ago have not happened or have not happened yet. I discovered in my processing during my time with Wendy Darling that I believed I had to let go of these dreams. I had to let go of these things and this hope because 
Hope is neediness with vulnerability interwoven into it, and also lack of self-worth. And I discovered I had a belief that I couldn't make these things happen. By letting them go, they were no longer a part of my life and they were no longer limiting me. I was wrong in that one. I was focused on trusting me, trusting my process and the process of life, healing the neediness and vulnerability and lack of self-worth and being accepting of and working with my process and the process of life I'm living until the other day. In this one-hour conversation with Wendy, I realized in my processing that I had not let go and released the hope fully. I had actually, and this was the part that sat in me, I had given up on my hope and I had rejected it. I had made having hope wrong, so that meant I made the possibilities and the probabilities and the actualities of what I'd hoped for wrong. I had pushed it away. But hope is not wrong. It's an essential process that I was to experience, that everyone is potentially to experience in our growth, to get us through the times we struggle with, to get us through the times when we have self-doubt or lack of self-worth, times when we are not connected to the faith and trust within us, where we do not fully believe in ourselves, then what was even more profound was the discovery that I had made looking into the future wrong. Wrong because to hope for what I'd hoped for all those years ago was setting myself up for failure and disappointment. So how on earth could the things I hoped for become possible, probable and actual in a reality when I see in this echo I was resisting them, rejecting them, pushing them away and closed down to them. I'd given up on them. Whether they happen or not is what is yet to be experienced. But how can they happen when I'm rejecting them? The gifts I've uncovered and discovered from the time I spent with Wendy before I've even done her meditation, has been beautiful. And I have and I am receiving them all. They've uncovered echoes of me that have hindered me, which I can now work with. I now accept my hope. And I make it okay that I have hope. I make it okay that my hope for what I wish, dream and want for is part of what I'm meant to experience now in a different way, where I'm not holding on to it and clinging to it and suffocating the life out of it like I did when I was younger. I open myself up more internally to allowing my being and my system to guide me to influence my hopes becoming a reality. I open myself up energetically to externally expressing my ability and potential in this area so that I can contribute to my hopes becoming a reality. Potential and ability that I may not have tapped into yet and expressed in the way that I will. I put the energy out there that my hopes happen. I deserve them to happen and it's time for them to happen. I made a commitment to myself last year that I wanted to express my soul potential. I've had some inklings as to what that is. But also, I've had this blank canvas where it is ready to be explored and to be filled with that potential. Last week, two days before I talked with Wendy, again, the thought about what is my soul potential surfaced into my conscious mind. I know that this is part of the process that I'm going through. And I'm going to discover more of that soul potential, and I'm up for it totally and utterly. Let me express the full potential of the true me. Let me not just express it, but experience it and what it creates externally, rather what I create externally. I now can allow hope to flow freely 
to do what it is naturally meant to do in its pure form. Rather than me doing what I said I'd been doing, which was holding on to it so tightly that I squeezed the life out of it because it was the only thing I had to hold on to. And rather than me sucking it deep down inside of me and storing it in the nether regions of my subconscious mind, and rather than me rejecting it, resisting it, and making it wrong. Hope is a process that so many people have needed, including me. Even though I'm more connected to my true self now and less to my hurt and conditioned self, having echoes surface from your past is not wrong. It says that you are now ready, or in my case, I'm now ready to work with hope and to explore it in a way I never have before. I'm now ready to explore with how I can contribute and influence my life in a more soul conscious and intentional way. Hope is a beautiful process that is a beacon of light to guide you to the next stage of your journey and process. When you no longer require hope, when you trust yourself, when you trust your process and the process of your life, when you're totally open to receiving because you know you deserve the beautiful things that honor you and you follow what is right by you. Don't make your hope wrong. Embrace your hope and allow it to freely flow and do what it's naturally meant to do as part of your journey through your human experience.